First of all, let's thank the basketball gods for giving us a second game seven. And I'm gonna just call it right now. Game seven of the Bucks versus the Celtics is gonna be the greatest playoff game this entire year. Before we get into the game and all that, I just want to ask Irwin, how do you feel about this? Because Irwin's prediction was that the Bucks were going to vanquish the Celtics in like game five or six, and that it was destiny that the Bucks and the Heat were going to meet in the, Cel uh, the conference finals for a trilogy. But now, I'm not so sure. I know what you're trying to do, man. You're trying to like get under my skin or piss me <laughs> off. I'm good, man. The Heat, they're resting. You know, they're waiting for whoever is in the conference finals. Well, these two motherfuckers, man, they kill each other right now in a slugfest in game seven. So it's a win-win situation, baby. Well, Basketball fans, they get a game seven with two yeah. young superstars in Jason Tatum and Giannis. And yeah, that, those are factual superstars. Yeah. Ain't no denying that. Yeah, exactly. And I think you're underestimating all the tiredness, man. Because if the Celtics win, those are two, how you like to say, it, spring chickens that are. I don't think they're gonna be as tired as as uh, you think they may be. Maybe not tired physically as bad, but mentally. Hey, man. The, 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 well, see, that's where, that's where I'm gonna. I kind of disagree with you there. Um, I'm good. on the side of when people face tougher opponents leading up into their deeper playoff runs um, or leading into the deeper playoff runs, mm -hmm. they tend to do better down the line because they've got say they went through the rigorous tests. Oh yeah, they, they, both of these teams definitely <clears throat> had a tested. harder route definitely. than the Heat. So, I think that puts now like the, the level of standard, you know, a little bit higher so by the time either one of them face the Heat, it'll be like, oh these D-leaguers? <laughs> Just kidding. You keep laughing but at them. But that's it, you know what I mean? You keep laughing at them, bro. We're gonna I mean, get he, everyone does say Max Struess is going to uh, uh, lock down Jason Tatum the entire series. Isn't that what you said? What? I mean, bro, you said, guys. Man, like, even in 2K, has it happened? If you put it like on rookie mode, man, shut the fuck. That's not happening, bro. Like, <laughs> no, man. Like, like the, the, to put the clamps on uh, on Jason Tatum is going to take a combined uh, team yeah. effort. Well, do you think they're going to be able to do that in Game 7? Because um, they're not doing a great job of that right now. Well, look, man. Um, regarding this game, a couple moments... Tatum, the moment, is like the whole fucking game. 46 fucking points. Uh, uh, but I like to say, okay, props to Marcus Smart, man. I know I ragged on you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he, he redeemed himself in this the, game. He on, redeemed himself. I ragged on you a little bit on the last uh, reaction video. You can see a card right over here. But like, I like to say the moment that caught my attention most of Marcus Smart was about maybe five minutes left in the whole game, in the fourth quarter. The Bucks. They were doing the run. Yeah, they were keeping they were, in. They kept they, trying and trying were, and trying. They were trying. Like the uh, the Bucks got as close as uh, four, and then like you know the Celtics tried to put them away. Got up to ten. Marcus Smart makes a three. Put it up to thirteen. Starts yeah, like calming do things down. So I'm like, all right, pretty cool, man. Like uh, he stepped up. Cool, kudos with that. <clears throat> I mean, one defense I'll give to Marcus Smart, which I agree with after uh, uh, thinking about the game and then hearing other opinions too. Mm -hmm. We we do have to, you know, part of the blame does fall on Mar Marcus for the last game's uh, debacle. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, why did Marcus Smart have the ball in his hands in the last few minutes, last minute of the, especially the last play of game six? You know what I mean? Yeah. Jason Tatum, or Brown, those are the Batman and Robin of the Celtics. They're the top two. Why aren't you guys... Going to taking the ball up court, and with four seconds left, that's still a decent amount of time. I think I heard some analysts and other opinions like exaggerating how much time that is. I kind of disagree with that, but it is more than you know than two point something seconds. It's enough time where like, bro, Tatum, the ball, boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that one I do. That's when I was like, okay, that make yeah, it makes sense. Looking back, like Smart doesn't deserve too much criticism. He shouldn't have had the ball in his hands in the first place to begin with. No, right. You're spitting facts. And um, I got something else that makes sense for you guys. So, guys, we have been making uh, uh, in-game... Well, not in-game. We've been doing reaction videos to every single game in the postseason. Raw. Like, you know, right after. So, 
whether you're a Bucks fan, whether you're a Celtics fan, I know it sounds like an ad. Hit that sub. <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> no, we definitely got your back uh, regarding that. Support your local small business. Your YouTube, your small, your YouTube small business. BTD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. And all right, Matt, for the but- I'm posting medium after the game. I mean, come on, one yeah, more. Yeah. That's faster. Look, it's the weekend right now. ESPN, Fox Sports, they're not their shows aren't gonna be on top of this right now, you know what I mean? They're, they're gonna touch upon it like, you know, briefly, yeah. but not like Kenny? Kenny for real who? He's not always reacting immediately. Rusty who? I don't know, Rusty Buck is out there doing after every game. So hey, it's us guys. It's us. Maybe no dunks, but us. No ball dunks. Ball talk deep. Well, no we talk deep about ball. No dunks is legit. Now for the Bucks, Giannis. Oh man, like I'm looking over here. 44 points, 20 rebounds? Ah. Yo, and wait, wait, Giannis, like, okay, I know Tatum went off like the whole game, but it seemed like every play that Giannis was doing in this game was like doing a fucking poster on somebody. Like, yeah. like yo, the guy does like one or two steps, boom. <laughs> I'm like, I, yeah. No, and he put I, a like, double double in this game. 44 and 20 is like, he, he, he did. For an L, fuck. He did what he was supposed to do, but I'm like, it the just, entire time though, all I keep thinking about, and I've said this before in other reactions with the series, it's just like seeing how how cer- certain things play out sometimes in this series. You, you can't help but wonder, man, if Chris Middleton was there. They needed if Chris Middleton. Middleton was there, and if the if the Bucks lose Game Seven, that's just gonna be the biggest question of them all. And the silver lining though, if you're Chris Middleton, it's like, hey, you're the injured. credibility increases because it's like. I'm not gonna lie. If Chris Middleton is in the series, he probably I'm been not over so already. sure if it'd be it'd be this close. Yeah, probably would have been over already. And another thing I want to point out is I told y'all, watch out for Derek White, man. That guy can ball and he can be uh, a cru- a crucial role player. And he's had his moments this game and last game. I'm glad to see him like he's not gonna getting his a little bit of, of more exposure because. He's, I think he's dope. Derek White is not role. Derek White is not somebody that's gonna fill up the stat sheet. When you look at the stat sheet, it's like, bro, Andre, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Only nine points, Let him know. five rebounds, plus uh, nine on the floor, two assists on thirty minutes, man. That was that was okay. But I'm and like, two steals. But what you gotta see, man, is this guy's doing the dirty work. You know, every championship, Hustler. every championship team needs a couple of those. Every aside. championship team needs an Alex Caruso. And there's a bunch of other examples, but for now, for this generation, we're just going to go with Caruso because he is inarguably the most popular role player uh, right now. You know what I mean? Or at least with that type of... The other one is like Patrick Beverly, but Caruso, Pat- in okay. my opinion, is more consistent with like the leadership and, and uh, I got you shot creation than Patrick. Alex, Alex Caruso, Patrick Beverly, P.J. Tucker, Bobby Portis. Um, Bobby those are Portis. some good... Even Bob, um, Bobby Portis a little bit. J.J. Reddick when he was playing. Yeah. Exactly, but all right, man. Based on everything that we saw, um, don't you ask know. me where I think Game Seven is gonna go. Cause I, I said this with I said this also with the Suns and Mavs. This but how are you feeling right now, man? As part of the reaction, hard. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Reaction. It can honestly go either way, and I feel like I know that may sound like a cop out answer, and it's like the most obvious answer because obviously it's a Game Seven. But look, both teams have taken one from each other's houses. Yeah. So it wouldn't like the Bucks winning Game Seven would be a shock, and let's not forget the repeating championships. They got the best player in the world, Giannis, and um, shout out to Giannis by the way. That, that original Disney Channel movie you got coming up, yeah, we're gonna review that. Stay tuned for that. So hit that sub. We're gonna review that movie, and the trailer actually looks pretty dope. Seems like a legit uh, decom. It's been a while since I've first of all seen a decom, but since there's been a good decom. Good job, Disney. I know you fucked up with Star Wars, but it looks like you're not going to fuck up with uh, this movie. <laughs> so, with that being said, I'm not going to lie. Boston's at home. I did say Giannis is the best player in the world. However, his opponent on the other side, Jason Tatum, is playing like the second best player in the world right now. And... Who you got? Crowd's going to be there. They keep matching up pretty well. So it's going to, you know, it's by a hairline who wins this next game. And I, I'm going to I think Boston's going to surprise us and dethrone the champions. I, I'm shocked to say this right now, too. I might just be very, like, in the moment in recency bias because they just won this game. But, like, just taking things into account. And let's not forget, they do have the momentum. They just won this last game. Momentum helps in sports all the time. Ask Tom Brady. But, yeah, what about you? Who you got? 
Look, um, you already know who I want. I want you got. I want the trilogy to happen so fucking badly. Cause hey, the, we'll get the sequel though. Yeah. Eastern Conference sequel. That's true. But a I year wa- after, two years later. But nothing will shut up the media on sleeping on the Miami Heat if they kick the Bucks' ass, especially since they're defending champions. All right, they're the one the that beat them. Bucks. My bad. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll save my rant for later. <laughs> <sighs> My bad. We're going to do a series preview for the Eastern Conference Finals. There you can talk about the Heat all you want. Thank God. Or whatever you believe in. I don't know. Um, look, my gut feeling is um, Jason Tatum is going to show up. Brown is going to show up. Al Horford only had two points today, tonight. Home cooking, Boston, this man yeah. turning back the clock, that Dominican blood. And he doesn't chicken. even have to score. That's the crazy part. He just got, look, so like today he got 10 rebounds, three assists. Four blocks, like he just has to do everything else. My put up points. My gut feeling is that it's gonna be the Celtics and it's gonna be in overtime. Then they're gonna win Over, game seven. Ooh, an overtime game seven. Overtime, it's gonna be some crazy. It's gonna be some crazy shit. But this shit's a toss up, bro. It, like, it, it uh, really is a toss up. Like obviously you got Giannis, but it shows you, man. They they're missing Middleton, and when Drew Holiday has like a so-so game, they don't look the same. Yeah, because everybody um, else also falls under. Like, yeah, man. Um, so, um, yeah, um, Holiday's gonna have to score at least twenty to twenty-five points, and I say at least because him scoring and getting things really going will also facilitate everyone else. It gets that momentum going. Uh, maybe even Portis having a good offensive game, and they're gonna Connaughton's gonna have to show up. Holiday, Matthews, L- Lopez, if he can make some clutch threes as a big man. And then Giannis being Giannis, it's possible, but and, yeah, and it's look, not looking good. And look, man, just to just to to, to be a, as objective as possible. Like I don't know if both of these teams are thinking about this, man. But what with the way how things are going, like shit, Celtics Bucks, man. Like whoever wins Game Seven, man, you're most likely making it to the finals. Uh, wow, look at uh, that. Uh, I but, have to agree. Um, it uh, sucks though because I do have I did have the Bucks. Winning it all, actually, but at the very least, making the finals uh, mm-hmm. before the playoffs started. So, I mean, this is obviously what a healthy Bucks is when Chris was uh, Middleton was on. Exactly, but, that, throw, uh, that that throws a wrench into things. Does. That's why. I but s- then, one thing I do want to point out, guys, if the Bucks happen to lose this series, I know this is gonna sound left field, but it makes sense. Something I brought up from the get go when uh, Middleton went down. It's mm-hmm. like this could be Giannis's LeBron series. He's already getting compared to LeBron because he's the best player right now. He's getting all the media coverage. He's gonna get all the negative, all the criticism, everything LeBron went through for all the 2010s. Mm-hmm. Now, what I mean is like, let's not forget LeBron made finals with shitty squad, with injured squads. You know, remember Kyrie and Kevin Love went down, um, and I thought, shit, if Giannis wins it all or even makes the finals. That solidifies, especially if you won it all, like top top 15 player of all time. I all th- time. I think he already is pretty close to that, man. He's, he's a, close, but he's, he's not a, solidified. He's a back- if he did that with his second best player out, he's, solidifies it. He's a two-time MVP yeah, you know, but look, champion. If they lose game seven, then that goes to show what LeBron did during those late mid-2010s to late 2010s was so special and we didn't fully appreciate especially majority of people did not fully appreciate him lifting these people to the final you guys get what I mean yeah so that like if he loses like oh shit in a way it kind of like also strengthens LeBron's historic legacy and I that's just something I thought about like on a macro connecting the dots and I was like damn this could really happen but Giannis if you're able to pull this game seven off and then you go against the heat and you get past the heat if you do then thank you if you do you're not, um, you're not yeah, assuming yeah, that we they never do. know they right. probably will though. but <laughs> I mean they've been struggling against the Celtics but I, in my opinion both of these teams are better than the heat mm-hmm. uh, and I, I'm a heat fan but I'm gonna be objective both of these teams nah. overall I better see. than the heat mm-hmm. and, but I do feel like Celtics you know in some ways I'm like damn Celtics would be a h- harder opponent Nah. For the Heat, but in some ways, I'm also thinking they may be an easier opponent. <laughs> but both of these teams are not easy, bro. It's like picking. I don't know. No, I mean like between the Bucks and the Celtics. But you're right; both of these teams are not easy. It's both gonna be a. 
Anyways, guys, uh, Bucks fans, how you guys feeling? Um, you know, you guys think you fucked up the series, you know, by losing tonight? Celtics oh, fan. for sure they probably think that. Uh, Celtics fans, how you guys feeling coming home? Are you excited? You say you think you're going to go to the conference finals, or are you concerned that you guys yeah. are going to choke? Bucks yeah. fan, what do you guys think your squad should do differently for Game 7 to win? And Celtics fan, what do you guys think you guys should do differently or similarly in this game? Uh, for the next game and both fans I love game 7 like okay um, I know you're gonna like the story of Giannis like what do you think about the Giannis movie that's coming up I think that's a great story Yo, good, I think that's good. something that everybody can like get behind huh? yeah uh, it kind of reminds me of I forgot what it was called but that that decom of the the twin sisters that made it I think they both made it to the, the WNBA. WNBA I know who you're talking yeah, about yeah that movie was dope. there were some dope basketball movies from Disney that one Luck of the Irish yeah, that, that was, was dope. I slept on. And I think those are the only... Oh, and then, of, co- of course, get your head in the game. <laughs> oh, God. All I don't right. know how you don't like High School Musical, man. That was a fucking dope era, man. That shit was dope. If you don't think HSM is dope, you're whack. Difference of opinions. All right. Anyways, I <laughs> uh, appreciate all the love and the hate. If we cross 10,000 subs be, by the end of this year, guys, me and Erwin will do a, a choreo to get your head in the game. That's all I'm going to say. Vanessa Hudgens can still get it. Um, anyways, guys, appreciate all the love and the hate. You guys already know. Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all podcasting platforms. We'll catch you guys soon for now. Take Later. care.